Good morning, guys. It is um, Thursday night for us, Friday morning for you guys. Um, we're just here at the house. Uh, it's not too late, actually. Um, you didn't get a devotional yesterday, guys, because uh, right before Bible study, I started to feel really sick, and um, I got feverish, and it took all <clears throat> the energy I had to uh, get through the Bible study. As soon as Bible study was over, uh, I went straight to the lobby because in the lobby of the church we have couches, and um, usually people hang out, talk, whatever. I just went straight to the couch and um, just sat there because I know Sharon had things to do. She was talking to people, and um, and then by the time I was heading home, I got feverish and just real achy, man. My whole body was hurting. Everything was hurting. Kind of reminded me of how it felt with COVID, you know, and... Um, so, obviously, I was going to take a test. I just want to make sure. Came back negative, and then um, came home, <clears throat> went to sleep, and um, slept till 1 o'clock in the day. That's crazy. I never, ever, ever do that. And uh, thank God that um, Sharon had taken some advice uh, and brought me, uh, she woke me up. I was kind of in and out, and she brought me a big old glass of uh basically watermelon uh, juice with, I think she said lemon or something. I don't know, but I downed that thing and instantly within 10 minutes felt better. And uh, then she had a, an appointment, so we had to get ready and go over there. But after the appointment, uh, we went to eat and uh, met with Brother Tomas. And then uh, I noticed that she, she wasn't feeling good either. So, um, we came home, uh, she lay down, and then we both knocked out again, and I just woke up 9.30, it's probably a little over 10 now, so um, I feel okay, you know, um, I, I'm wondering, as far as for me, I, I'm curious to know if it was a, some type of heat stroke, or not a heat stroke, but because I probably would have had to go to the hospital if it was a heat stroke, but maybe um, uh, uh, dehydrated. <clears throat> so the other day, usually I ride in the morning, guys, real early before the sun gets hot. But this day we rode. Um, Sister Veronica wanted to go for a ride. She's the um, Alex and Veronica from Lake Tahoe and um, wanted to go for a ride. So by the time we actually got to ride, it was already at the peak of the day. And we did nine miles, you know, and um, I noticed that I was like, I couldn't stop sweating. I felt thirsty, so thirsty, you know, and uh, right there where we, where I racked the bikes up, there was an AM, PM within two minutes from there. So I went in there and bought a, uh, one of those Pedia drinks that they have now. They're kind of like right next to the Gatorades and I downed that whole bottle. I still felt thirsty. I was sweating profusely. Profusely? Never said that word before. I don't know. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so, um, but that day, I didn't feel that. It wasn't until the next day. Because the bike ride was on Tuesday, and then yesterday was Wednesday, and that's when I started feeling it. So I don't know if it had to do with that. Maybe I didn't fully hydrate myself. Maybe it's just some bug that's passing that's not COVID. You know, there is still flus that are not COVID. There's still... <laughs> sicknesses people act like that stuff don't exist anymore um but anyways um so even today during the day i felt better maybe like at 90 percent but then when we got home I, I started to feel like pain again like my like my body aching and, and uh so anyways um i still wanted to do a devotional and talk about something talk to you guys a little bit especially because it's going to kick off the weekend and i don't want to leave you guys with nothing you know um, little fun fact, uh, on the way, I forgot where I was today. Um, I think when we were waiting at the appointment, I once in a while happened to jump on Facebook marketplace, Facebook marketplace. For those of you that don't have Facebook is basically like a Craigslist or, um, an offer up, you know, type of thing, but it's through Facebook. And I like, I like to go on there because I feel like there's less likely to scam because if somebody wants to buy something from you or you want to buy something from them, you could always go to their profile 
and see if it's a real profile, then at least you know this is a real person, you know? <clears throat> so, anyways, um, little fun fact is I love figs. I love figs, man, and I guess they're in season. And uh, there was a lady that was selling 30 for 10 bucks, you know, and um, right here in Stockton. So um, I went and got myself uh, two bags, <laughs> you know, and um, this is my dinner. I ate figs and a salad, chicken salad, you know. And, uh, man, I love the figs, you know. Uh, I was telling Sharon that when I was growing up, my uncle, he lives in Stockton now, but back then... Uh, <clears throat> he lived on the same street uh, out in the ranch, and uh, they had a fig tree. And uh, my Theo Hank, Theo is uncle, for those of you who don't know Spanish. And um, I would always go down there. When they were in season, I was there every day. I'd climb up that tree eating figs like crazy. I don't even think I'd wash them. Maybe I did. Maybe sometimes I didn't. I didn't really care because... Um, I, would, I wouldn't eat the skin, if I remember right. I didn't know you could eat the skin. I just found out you could eat the skin. Just now, 50 years old. So I would kind of rip them inside out and then eat all the fruit inside. So I'm like, why, why wash them? I'm just eating the inside. Um, I just learned that uh, the skin's edible. So you flip it inside out, and then you eat the whole thing. You don't eat it like this. You flip it inside out and then eat it. And man, it's so good. And I didn't realize all that time I was robbing myself of fiber, natural fiber. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, I, I had a whole plate I was eating. Now I'm down to half a plate. These things are so good. Anyways, um, one more thing. I know I usually don't promote it, but my book, guys, Who Are You? Identity in Christ. Uh, this is a book, my latest book that I wrote. And um, if you want to be a believer that walks in your calling, that walks in, in who you truly are, you will not see... Um, healings, miracles, uh, demons cast it out, uh, empowerment, uh, until you know who you are in Christ. And I wrote this book. This is the seminar I taught for eight years until I finally wrote it down in a book. That's on Amazon. It's also an Audible uh, and as an e-book. Um, so, and then I'm not sure if I told you this. When I went to the Texas prison, uh, I'm going to cover their addresses, but I got two letters, guys, two letters this is a church address, so it don't matter if you know that. Um, two of the men that I met there in uh, the Texas prison wrote me, and it's a blessing. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, write each one of them. I was um, waiting for um, for things to get to normal because Alex and Veronica are here, so I wanted to spend a lot of time with them. And then, you know, they just left yesterday. And now I'm not feeling that great, you know, but. Anyways, I want to write these gentlemen, and uh, it'll be a blessing for... I know what it's like, man, during mail call when your name is called. You know, it's exciting, you know. So, anyways, um, I wanted to um, talk about this passage in 2 Corinthians 34, 29. Uh, let me talk about... Let me set the stage here in the context of what it is that we're talking about first. Um, in the time of Israel, yeah, it started off, they started off worshiping God, the one true God, um, with King David and so on and so forth. But as the generations came, as kings came, they forgot about the things of God. They forgot where they came from. I mean, they would literally not even be a nation if it wasn't for God, yet they forgot him, you know, and I guess to make it relevant, Many of us wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for God. So we better be really careful not forgetting Him. You know, and, um, but Second Chronicles 34, um, 29, something happened, right? So a, a king finally came. A king finally came after generation and generation and generation of kings that did not serve the Lord. A king named Josiah came upon the scene. And um, he was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. So, um, but what happened was, he, his people, his administration, his priests, found the old books. 
the Bible, basically, of that time, which is the first five books of the Bible, the law, the books of Moses. And, um, and he found them, right? After all this time, I'm actually, I'm going to skip back to give you the context of it, chapter 34, but in verse 8. In the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azileel, uh, Messiah, the governor of the city, and jo Joah, the son of Jehoraz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. So they went to repair it, right? And um, in the middle of repairing it, they found the ancient books. They found the books of Moses. And he had a choice to make, guys, at this point. He had a choice of... He had a choice of just letting things go or restoring everything back to the way it should be. You know, and he chose to restore everything back. In verse 20, 29, it says, Then the king sent and gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. So all the elders, all the people that were of importance as far as the, the people that had influence in the nation, right? And it says, The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, and all the people, great and small, and he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. So the king summoned everybody. So it was not a choice. They had to go. And once they got there, instead of making a speech, he started reading. He started reading everything. And, um, and then it says, Then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord. And to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul. To perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. So the king, even though he, he served God and whatnot, he, even he had lost. Even he had lost some of the teaching. And upon everybody, with everybody there, he made a choice to reestablish himself rededicate himself unto God, you know, and do things right. And then it says in 32, and he made all who were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin take a stand. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Then Josiah removed all the abominations from all the country that belonged to the children of Israel. Diligently served the Lord their God all his days. They did not depart from following the Lord God of their fathers. So, if if somebody is here watching, and maybe you're watching, you won't go to a church, you won't hear a preacher, but for some reason you listen to this channel. I thank you first of all. Um, but maybe at one time, the one place you you live for the Lord, you had given your life to the Lord. You know, and uh, and it didn't go quite well. And maybe now you're watching these videos where something in you is pulling you to give it another shot, give it another try. You know, in the same way that um, Josiah found the commandments, what's interesting to me is the fact that he probably was serving God to the best of his ability. But a lot of times what isn't said says a lot. What is not said says a lot. And I say that to say this, is that if Josiah was serving the Lord the way he was supposed to, he wouldn't have been as excited and as convicted when he read the, the books of Moses. So we know that even though he thought he was living right, because some of you, you think you're living right. You're like, well, I love the Lord. I, I, I love Jesus. You know, um, but if you don't know this, you're 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 putting you're handicapping yourself. You're setting yourself up for failure, for a train wreck, you know. And the fact that Josiah got so moved to rededicate his life in front of all the officials, all the important people of the city of the government, means that there was so much more he was missing. That he didn't get. And now in front of everybody. Not only that. But he felt moved. To remove. 
the abominations that the people had set up. In other words, people had set up statues of other gods, and he tore them down. You know, um, as a pastor or an evangelist now, my job is to tear down those idols. Yeah, maybe there's not statues everywhere like back then, but a lot of people have idols in their heart. And it is my job as a pastor to tear those things down. You know, how do I do that? By informing you, by letting you know what the Word of God says, by, by, by truly speaking to God and, have, and trusting that He'll give me the message every Sunday, even these devotionals. There's sometimes I do these devotionals and the things that come up, and I'm just like, man, Lord, I didn't even know I was going to say all that. You know, because it's God talking. I always try to be obedient, have my heart open. You know, for the Lord to talk and speak through me, more importantly, you know, and, um, you know, how do I remove the, the statues, the abominations, is by teaching and preaching and doing these devotionals. A lot of times um, I'll hit something that, that you didn't even realize was going to hurt you. Well, a lot of times the reason it hurts is because there's a statue there. there. There's an idol there. There's something that you worship. And it has to be torn down in order to serve God to the fullest. Because if we gave Satan 100% of ourselves, how are we going to give the Lord any less? You know, um, when I was serving Satan, what I mean by that is by default, if you're not serving God, you're serving Satan. So when I was serving Satan, I didn't give none of my life to God. I, I had no room for God. It was all Satan's. But now that I'm saved... Now is it fair to give the Lord some of me and the enemy a little bit of me? I didn't, I didn't pay God no mind when I was serving Satan. So now that I'm serving God, why should I pay Satan no mind? You know, so, you know, guys, we, we have to remove those things in our life and our heart. And you know what they are, man. You, you know, you go to church, you, you try to pray, and a lot of you say, man, you know what? I, I don't know how to change. I don't know how. And I... I have a feeling there's two things to that. Number one is the Bible says the enemy blinds you. But I think that's only 50% of it. Because I believe the other half is the fact that sometimes we don't want to admit that we know exactly why we're failing in serving the Lord. You know, just be honest. Be honest with yourself. You don't have to be honest with me. But the Lord knows. He knows. So when we're like, man, I keep trying to do this and it's hard and this and that and you know what's holding you back. You just don't want to give it to the Lord. And, and we can't do that. How can you, how can you believe that, that, that God doesn't know that we're holding back? He wants all of you. But trust me, when, when He has all of you, there's something that happens in your life, man. You know, and, and I could say this over and over and over, and I think some people just won't get it. But the fact is this, is that he wants everything. And I put it this way, when he gave himself to you on the cross, did he give himself completely away? Yeah, he suffered. He suffered and he died a horrible death. He gave us everything. He held nothing back. You know, and um, I think that um, the story of Josiah is probably... Actually, what I want to, um, I believe, as of now, once I finish with the book of Esther on Wednesday nights, I think I'm going to talk about the King Josiah. It's not as long. I just kind of feel like because we did so long on King David, I want to do a few short ones until we get into a bigger study. Because every Wednesday, what we do, guys, we pick a book in the Bible and we read through it. And however long, however many weeks it takes, then that's what it takes. Uh, Josiah is not a book, it's actually a story within a book, but I think it's important enough to, um, to study it, discern it, break it down, you know, and, uh, but yeah, man, uh, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys, is that um, it's okay to come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I did follow you before, but I had half the information. Now I want to do it all. Now, in the same way Josiah read the scriptures and said, I messed up. I thought I was serving him, but I realized I need to repent. You know, so um, 
yeah, I just wanted to talk to talk about that with you guys for a little bit and still not feeling great. I'm kind of actually kind of clammy right now. I have a fan facing me and I still feel real clammy. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, guys, you know, but whatever it is, it'll pass. Um, and um, then uh, I'll be back, you know, good, as good as ever. I'm hoping uh, this will pass 100% before Sunday service. Uh, but anyways, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. Have a great, great weekend. Um, make sure you go over to our website if you find, want to find out more about the bike ride, especially if you want to get involved in the bike ride. Uh, that's in February. The dates are on there. Uh, www.houseofrestchurch.com. And um, please pray for the churches that, House of Rest churches that are, that have begun, even though uh, we have the Phoenix has been over, over a year and some change. Uh, the Phoenix House of Rest. We have Spring, Texas. If you're in that area, make sure you get a hold of me or comment on here. That is um, in Spring, Texas, Texas, which is North Houston. It's really close to the Woodlands. It's close to Humble. It's funny because it, um, the town of Humble is actually spelled humble, like I'm a humble person. But the H is there, but they pronounce it with the H silent, Humble. So I'm like, why did they even put the H then? <laughs> but anyways, it's up north of Houston. And um, pretty soon, September the 4th is the first service for the Lake Tahoe Church with uh, Alex and Veronica. So thank you so much. We're going to be there, obviously, the first day. And uh, we're really excited about it. It's, it's going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to put the address pretty soon. We're going to make the flyer and everything. Uh, Pretty soon. I probably would have done it already if I was feeling better. So anyways, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching our video. If you, A good way to help this channel is to hit a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share. When you do those four things, that's the best thing we can do to help um, the algorithm of YouTube share this channel with other people that don't even know it exists yet. So all right, guys. God bless you. Thank you so much.